subscribe to the Danny Houston podcast, man. You know what I'm saying? So to get out to, you know, reconnect with him to shoot my first video here in Houston in Sunnyside at King Stowe with Alvo, my nigga Alvo and everybody from Mob World and just those them guys, you know what I'm saying? And um to reconnect with people. The another very important thing um is that in prison, which was very important to my development, I ended up meeting a lot of the people that would become my brothers. So um to this day I'm around people that um that I that I did time with they fucking like my brothers they they a part of they know everything about me I know everything about them I trust them you know I trust them they 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 brothers to me you know and I keep them around right right now with Buster with me you know somebody's around me I was locked up with for sure at all time like when I'm doing anything you know um but Everything was important for me, even like in prison. What I've been with this rap shit, like I've been with this rap shit, like you know, it's a lot. In prison, rap is different. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, wait. But even before that, though, what was when the when the, when the feds kicked the door in? What was what was you know what I'm saying? Take me. I was on the couch. Uh, I was on the front. I was laying on the couch. Um, my aunt. I had just got off the phone. With my aunt. She had told me that I had hit on this board. I won this car. Um, uh, I remember, I remember putting my suite out. I remember looking at the highlights to the game. Um, before that, uh, my homie Chet had had like a Super Bowl party at his house. I remember all, you gotta, I've thought about this shit for years, this same day over and over again. Um, you know, he, he, I remember going around to his house. I was eating some wings and shit. I went to record. I was supposed to re record a freestyle on Lil Wayne Money on my mind beat. I remember that. Uh, I remember going to the studio. Uh, shout out Kane. He was the one, you know, he loaded it up for me. Um, I remember not rapping on it for whatever reason. And then I went home. Um, Two people came to my door this night. This is very important right here. At my door, this 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 person who shall remain nameless came to my door. A female. I served her. Mm. She left. Then it was this dude. What you what you moving at this time? Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> My my mentality to trapping was, I don't want you to have to leave here and go nowhere else. Mm. That was like a, I feel like I failed you if if that happened. You know, if you gotta leave here, if I gotta make a call, so if I don't give a fuck, I got I got Reggie Bowes, Tabs, Soft and Hard, Ice, Pills, you know. Uh, pharmacy pills, hydrocodone, Xanax, Somos, Lord Tabs. Uh, just don't leave here and go somewhere else. Like that's just was my. And life. you, this all at the crib, not at the trap. Oh God damn! Um, I had another spot in Dallas. Though people say that I was shitting or eating where I shit or whatever. I didn't I didn't think of it like that. I, I thought of it as this ain't like where I live. This is like my spot. And plus, I'm going to It's ego, you, bro. It's it, ego and arrogance. No, you get I'm, money no, and, no, and, no, no, and, no, no, and I'm going to tell and, you really what it was. I, even to this day, I'm like this with my fans. My heart for my clientele, man, I love them. They would never do me wrong. It's niggas I have to worry about. Like, I always believed like that. Even to this day, I, I, when it comes to fans, I treat my fans above and beyond. And I always treated my clientele 
above and beyond. That I don't want my fucking clientele having bad experiences. I want everybody saying, I didn't like I nigga, I'm burning Yankee candles in here. That shit wasn't that wasn't even a thing. Like my I keep this shit immaculate. You coming over here fucking with me is the greatest thing that's going to ever happen to you. This is this is going to be the <laughs> highlight of your day. You're going to come in here. I'm going to serve you. We're going to have some conversation. We're going to dialogue. I know what's going on with you. you you're not going to turn me into no lie. This ain't even no law shit. This, I, that's how I felt. I felt like, man, this ain't no fucking police shit. This shit is fucking us fellowshipping and communing with one another. This this. I always had a tremendous love for the game, and I, I dealt with it from, from a standpoint of love for the, for the people, and the money comes. It, the money comes out of that. What I choose to do with my money out of that shit is just what I choose to do with it, but it comes from love. I always hustle with love. I never hustle to hurt nobody. I never hustle to get nobody no shit that was going to fuck them up you know what i'm saying i i always wanted to give people what they wanted that they couldn't get nowhere else especially deliver it the way that i deliver it like i'm this shit this shit run deep this is why i try to tell people like when it come to like my upbringing in 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 the game or or like selling drugs or anything like that my heart for that shit is I was reared by quote unquote dope fiends or whatnot. So like like I don't see them the way people see them. I, I I'm not turned off by them. Like I'm not turned off by people that do drugs. Like I'm I I just have to take care of them. That's the way I looked at it, you know? So I was very shocked that a motherfucker would kick my door in. What the fuck? But come to find out, it was just a bullshit ass nigga that um but everything wait, wait, is but, but, in but, God's plan. But Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.